Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Likewise, Brian. Welcome to the February 2nd meeting of the uh, first of 2022 of the Community Preservation Committee. As always, we begin with general public comment. There are no general public, correct, Sarah? Correct. No one I'm missing? Nobody to comment. Um, so we'll move right on to the approval of minutes. Sarah sent us minutes, I think yesterday, from October the 20th, I believe. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Moved. Thank you, Martha. Second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Any comments on the minutes? Uh, Sarah, we, we have to do roll call even on the minutes. We do. Uh, okay. Jana? Yes. Dan? Sorry, my wife's computer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Chris? Yes. Martha? Yes. Linda? Yep. And Brian? Yes. All right. You know. Thank you, Sarah, for providing us with those. Um, so, Chair's report. I have just a, a, a few things uh, to go through before we get to the main part of the meeting, which is to look over our, our CPA plan. Um, the first is the status of last cycle. Uh, and Sarah, you can help me out if I, if I botch this. Uh, Michelson has not signed the contract yet. Uh, work is to begin theoretically in March but Sarah has yet to hear from them whether they are accepting the conditions that we set forth, notably the uh, historic preservation restriction requirement. Uh, if, I don't know if people have noticed they've got all that scaffolding out front, which, I mean, the work has not begun, so I don't know if that's to protect people from falling so. bricks, is that what it is? I think that's uh, right. so, so we shall see. So we'll be curious as to whether or not they agree and they go ahead and and what's going on there. Uh, sort of same thing with the Disabled Homeless Project. Uh, they have um, not signed a contract with Sarah. It's still, there's still financing to be worked out that Sarah and Wayne and the principals with that project are working on. Uh, Sarah, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that. What the sure, so I, I actually got an update on that one since I spoke with you, Brian. Um, so they are hoping to close on February 14th. At this point, it doesn't look like they're planning to contribute any CPA funds toward the acquisition. So we will need to work out later whether it will be an affordable housing restriction or a first mortgage or how we will make sure that the CPA funds are secured. And we will know that when, do you think? Uh, this month sometime after oh, they great. close, I hope. So that will help us with our funding recommendations to know what, if, I mean, they could, they could reject our contribution in, in its entirety, correct? They could, I wouldn't anticipate that they would. Um, they're planning to use CPA funding for building improvements that are necessary to transform the existing structure into the planned use. Um, but I, I don't know when they'll be ready to sign a contract. We haven't even written it yet because we really don't know what the details are. And we'll have to spell out the, uh, the mechanism that will ensure the city funds before that. Uh, questions for Sarah about any of these two projects? Uh, yes, yeah, Sarah, have they retained a development consultant, the Housing for the Disabled? I, I don't know at this point. Um, I don't think it would be Valley CDC because they have other significant projects moving <laughs> forward, but no, I, I don't know. But that's something that they would have to do before any CPA funds were released. Did they, did they think that would be an issue or have you not gotten feedback? I, have, I haven't received feedback yet. They, I didn't provide them a copy of the council order, so they weren't aware of that condition, um, but they didn't provide any feedback on that. That is a condition that we put on them. So you'll follow through with that, I'm sure. Any other questions for Sarah about those two projects? So good news is, um, and Sarah, again, correct me if I'm wrong, if I botched the numbers here. We received an additional 78,000 
273 from the state as matching funds. That is 100, uh, combined with some other stuff, we got 170,000 more than we thought we would for a grand total of $593,000 for the state match. Um, so those of us at the end of the agenda, when we vote on our dues, I suppose we can keep that in mind, uh, maybe not. Uh, but again, a $593,000 matching grant is certainly nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. Uh, some of that, and, and explain that to us, Sarah, cannot be, is, is, is not uh, in our pockets for this round, that it has to wait actually until fiscal year 23 to do that. And yes. why so, is that, Sarah? Uh, so we're not able to spend anything that's above the estimate that was provided to city council and um, put into the set aside accounts and accounted for that way. Um, so we have to wait until the close of FY22 to have that funding available. So the grand total that is not available for this round is 170,000, uh, which will leave about 800,000 in cash for the remainder of FY22. Did everyone hear that? So around 800,000 for us this cycle. Great. Thank and our, you. Brian, our state match was actually 763, which is about 50%. Of oh our my estimated golly. local revenue. Wow, that's just gross. Oh, so that's the 593 plus the 170 additional. Sorry, that's sorry. great. Uh, questions for Sarah about any of that? Uh, last, before we move on, is um, uh, while projects aren't or proposals are not due until I believe it's Monday, Sarah's got a pretty good idea of what's coming down the, the, the pike. And it includes a small, uh, the, the, these are all possibilities. So Sarah's, nothing is cast in stone yet, but um, Laurel Park is looking at a, uh, a small grant, it would be our only small grant, which is a walking tour similar to what we did in Florence with all the signs um, that are there. Uh, Valley CDC, this is the big one, uh, the Bridge Street nursing home, former nursing home, uh, which Valley CDC is interested in turning into a very large affordable housing project, um, somewhere around $25 million, of which the ask may be um, as much as $850,000 to us. So again, these are all, these are all tentative. Uh, historic Northampton, more Shepherd Bar, more Shepherd Bar. Uh, let's see, the Ms. Flows might come in with the neon sign. Who knew neon signs ran out of neon? But uh, evidently they do. Um, Ryan Road looking at playground equipment. Uh, that's always been a big ask for the other schools. So we'll see what, what comes there. And I think the, uh, the a big question mark is O'Connell, whether they're gonna do anything with St. John's uh, and come to us with that. I think Sarah feels that that will happen, but maybe just not this cycle. Uh, did I miss anything, Sarah? Uh, that is it. Uh, questions for Sarah about any of those possibilities? Um, Sarah, what, what, does, what does that add up to, Sarah, in, in potential requests? I, Do I don't. I don't know what all of the requests might come in at. Uh, we're anticipating the, the bridge road project to be someplace around 850,000 so that if funded, that would need to uh, be a bonding scenario. And I really don't have a good sense of what the, the rest of the projects might come in at. Is that something you might want to change on the eligibility sheet? Because I don't think it calls for that. Or is that we just bide our time and wait till the application. Yeah, we, we've just been waiting because a lot of applicants don't know the exact number and ha have been a little hesitant to overshoot or undershoot at that stage. Um, so it's really just to check to make sure that whatever they're looking at is eligible to be funded through the CPA. So clearly it's gonna be over the 800,000 that we have available to us. Um, any other questions for Sarah about any of these impending? Oh, and the big news is nothing from Wayne. You heard that correct. <laughs> nothing from Wayne, which is shocking. 
and we want to just make sure he's got a pole still on him. Sarah, can you do that for us? And uh, because I don't know if we've ever gone around with nothing. Is is that true? I mean, I can't remember I, around without him. I, I so, can't remember. So I'm sure he will make up for that in the in the in the next fiscal year. All right. So moving right along to our um, our session tonight, which is to review the CPA plan to make suggestions, uh, corrections, uh, comments to Sarah. Uh, two weeks from uh, tonight, in our meeting on the seventeenth, is the public uh, for the public comment session on on the plan, uh, and this is something we do periodically. Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong. The last time was 2015. Is that right? 2016. 2016. So it's been, what's that, six, seven years since we've done this. Hopefully folks have had a chance to look at what Sarah sent us last week, particularly in your areas of expertise, uh, so that we can uh, comment on those. Sarah's done a tremendous amount of work uh, in, in making what what I think are really valid and constructive uh, suggestions and and uh, and critiques to that. Um, I, I went over it in terms of just wordsmithing. So those of you that read it will know there's some weird, weird formatting stuff and there are words that are strung together. So I don't think we need to worry about that. Sarah will take care of all that in the in the uh, in the in the draft that will go out for uh, for approval. Um, but Sarah and I sort of were brainstorming of how, how it's best for us to go through this. And uh, I think section by section to start off with the administrative section and then move on to housing, recreation, historic preservation and, uh, and uh, open space. Uh, and she can sc screen share with us the latest version that she has and maybe highlight the, the sections that she's changed but we're anticipating that you all have other suggestions. Perhaps you do that. Um, that uh, um, that we that we can give to Sarah now. A finished document. Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong again with this. Finished document is not expected to be done tonight. No. We'll float the no, plan definitely. because we certainly will entertain, as we should and must, uh, public comment, and that public comment will be reflected in the plan as well. So the goal is to get something by what midway through this cycle back to the, us for us to vote on and accept as the plan. Is that, does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, so um, what I'm planning after tonight is to compile all of the changes that get made. A few pe people have sent me um, edits. Those aren't, I didn't send them out again just so that everyone was looking at the same versions, but I'll incorporate those in anything we work on tonight and put together a pretty solid draft that's available for public comment. Then we'll have our public hearing at the next meeting, and then I'll compile any changes that result from that process. And then we will vote on that at some point. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Great, good. So one, uh, hats off to Sarah for the amount of work that she's put into what can be a pretty dry document, but I think actually can be a, a, an important working document for us. And certainly one that the applicants uh, need to read and need to use and need to understand. So I think it's pretty readable. There's some language that is a little clunky, but that's always true with any of these, these, kinds, of, these kinds of documents. Um, when we do have a final version, I will make sure that it's a lot more attractive than this ugly word document. The, um, the CPA plan that's available to the public now is, is much better looking with photos and all sorts of things, but it, for editing purposes, this was just a lot easier. Great. So thank you, Sarah, for all your work and uh, all your good work in, in doing that. Before we, before Sarah, before Sarah starts to screen share with us, and we go through, and hopefully this won't take forever, um, but this it's an important thing to do. Are there any general comments about the plan for Sarah that people would like to share? Any any big ticket items that stand out that? Uh, that you felt really needed revision or um, change? Folks are generally okay with 
what they've read? Yes, uh, Chris? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I think, I think a huge amount of work has been done. I think that um, as we go forward tonight, if it's possible, um, as we go to each section, if, if Sarah can um, identify for us um, any significant substantive alterations that have been made um, and what the, give us a little background, um, that would be helpful. Um, and the other comment, just general comment I had was um, one of the attachments were, were the decision guidelines, which we discussed in the past, but haven't, haven't had a chance to look at before. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, I, I think I saw somewhere that there's an expectation that this is going to be incorporated in there somewhere, um, which I'm fine with, but I think, um, I think, uh, and this may be too gritty at this point, but I think it's important to point out that these are guidelines and not rules and that, um, we reserve the right at any moment to deviate potentially substantially from these, um, uh, if we if we feel strongly that uh, uh, any particular proposal doesn't doesn't necessarily conform. Great, that's great suggestion. Um, Chris, were you referring particularly to that to the Hingham one that that Sarah said is a, a separate attachment, the the yeah. one page listing criteria? Yeah, which I think is great. Um, but I, as I was going through it, I was going, I just sort of chuckling at, at how you know it it wouldn't apply to a number of the decisions that we made with which I'm perfectly comfortable. And I just think it's important for, for, for um, potential users to recognize that this is not a, you know, it's, it, it's not a hard and fast thing, but it's, it, it's sort of will guide our thinking, but doesn't lock us into anything. Yeah. It's a great point. I think Sarah was going to take at, at the end of each, uh, specific category for historic preservation. I think it's the last part of each section has criteria by which yeah. projects will be judged. So she's gonna take that, incorporate that into the Hingham thing rather than one set of criteria, but for each for each section and, and uh, have it reflect what the rest of the plan actually says. I think that, that, that will be helpful. Uh, and I think your comment of, of these are recommendations, but we reserve the right to do whatever the hell we want whenever we want it is is a is a is a good one uh, so sarah you want to start by sharing sharing the screen and then moving right along as chris said to the oh hold on before we do that any other general comments martha yeah i just want to be sure um i understand who the audience for this is um, I'm assuming applicants, but is it beyond that? Um, would it be elected officials, uh, city staff, um, the general public? Who are we aiming towards? I think it's really all of those things. So the CPC okay. is required by the state legislation to produce this plan and, and revise it periodically. Um, so it's and in reality, it will mostly be used by applicants and the committee. But if any general members of the public or elected officials or anyone else had questions about how, how the CPA is administered in Northampton or what the city's priorities are, then they would certainly be welcome to reference that. Okay, so we can't necessarily assume like a, um, a certain knowledge base for all the people who are going to be reading this. Okay. No, so the, the administration section has includes all that background for that reason. Thank you. Dan? Yeah, I just want to thank Sarah. You know, the, the track changes you have on all the, the documents with the red line is really helpful for seeing the changes. And to, uh, to Martha's, related to Martha's question, you know, thinking about all the different audiences, I, I appreciate how Sarah's hyperlinking reports, especially the, I'll highlight the unlocking opportunity, assessment, assessment of barriers to fair housing in Northampton, the, I was part of the, the Northampton Housing Partnership on putting that together and just appreciate the links. I, I think um, it just as, as we all go through it, maybe we just make sure that there, there are hyperlinks when you see something that, you know, maybe, maybe the, the, the public wouldn't know where to go for the resource, but I, so far I haven't, I haven't caught any. That might be just something to look for. 
It's a it's a great point, Dan, because those links do change, and then there's nothing worse than getting all excited, clicking on something, and getting the oops uh, that does not exist anymore. So yeah. that's certainly an issue. Other general stuff for Sarah. All right, Sarah, you want to work your Zoom magic and sure. Uh, so I guess let's start with the overview and admin. Uh, so the, the major changes with this section, um, besides updates to, um, to show what, what the actual practices are versus things that were described previously that weren't really occurring, uh, a little bit, some changes in city government, it referenced mayor approval sometimes, which um, doesn't actually happen by city charter. Uh, we're incorporation of the, um, the, the fund discussions that Chris had suggested that we agree would make sense in the plan. And I think pretty much it. I cleaned up the sections a little bit just to make sense more. Um, does anybody want to jump to any section in particular or go over anything here? Linda? I just had one, maybe two very small suggestions um, on page seven. Um, you indicated the committee conducts two funding rounds. And I think we have from time to time sort of said, huh, I wonder if we really need to, should we just do one? So you just insert the word generally, give us the latitude, because I think we have entertained the possibility of just one funding round. And I'm sorry, I didn't note what line that is. And find that and add it yeah and my my second very small comment was um you have all along said that stuff has to be submitted to you and it'd be wonderful if you stayed here forever but i don't know that you will so you might just want to say to you know cpc staff currently or and, and then give your contact information. Sure, I mean, for reading purposes and usability, I included myself and in the uh, unlikely event that I should uh, leave the city, then someone could just go in and insert a different email address. That's true. Linda, I object that you think Sarah's not gonna stay here forever. <laughs> and I think we, we should put explicit in the plan that Sarah <laughs> will be staying here forever. I think that is a critical part of the plan. You're right. Sarah and I were talking, um, it was late last week about this and, and uh, how, how challenging it is for cities and towns that do not have a paid staff person working for their CPC and how much we, we rely on Sarah to do just about everything. And, and I just can't imagine being on a committee without a paid staff person who can manage the, you know, manage what's going on. So, um, so staying here forever is, is crucial for you. Um, do you want, Sarah, do you want to go to the, the one that you changed given Chris's uh, feedback? Can you find that section? Sorry if I'm making everybody dizzy. I know sometimes it Looks a little squirrely. Uh, so uh, the addition is here. So this is for the um, undesignated fund grant. So that was the verbatim language that the committee had approved regard regarding those types of applications. Chris, is that how you remember things? Uh, yes, and thank you. Okay, keep scrolling down, Sarah. Any other big areas of red that you that was, did your additions? That was really it. Um, no changes there. Uh, this isn't new, I just moved it. So it looks like it changed. And then the allowable use table will get inserted into the final plan. And I, I really didn't mess with the CPA information guide at all. 
there's a lot of references out there. Um, these still seem relevant. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, keep going, Sarah. I had, there was a one thing that I, Uh, so this is overview of preservation restrictions and mortgages. And, uh, that's where I had moved the small grants policy from. The, the only, my only suggestion, I and I think it was in this section, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, um, was there was a, a request when, uh, when uh, uh, people are, are, are writing proposals to explain uh, what, um, whether or not they would accept reduced funding or oh, partial that's right. funding. Yeah. And if so, uh, uh, what, how that would work. And I suggested that we, that we really take that out of, a, uh, of asking applicants to do that because they never do that. You never get in, in, the, in their proposals or maybe it's almost never. Do they make a request or, or, or uh, tell us how, how they would propose doing what they're doing with partial funding? We, all, we also all, uh, always have that option to partially fund obviously but I don't think that we need to specify that there's, there's a line. Thank you, Sarah. To specify whether they would accept partial funding, I think can go because they don't put that in their proposals. They don't put that in their budget. And it's an odd request to say, well, you know, I mean, we, we can come back and ask and we can make that suggestion. So that would, that's my comment. Any other, any thoughts on that that people have? I think that makes sense, Brian. Everybody okay with that? Okay. I, I agree. And just for Sarah's notes on Linda's comments, I found the two funding round mentions on pages seven and 25. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. I will, Thank you. That's noted. I will make those corrections. I, I do have a, a question for Martha, who understands the nuances of the historic uh, work, are, are there, I know you keep ed, trying to educate us about the distinctions between rehabilitation and restoration and blah, 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 blah. Are the definitional sections adequate, do you think? Could you scroll to those, please? Um, so, so this is verbatim from the uh, CPA legislation. And it's also um, uh, US Secretary of the Interior probably as well, yeah. To, and, so and we have, so go ahead. Linda's there comment another was- category? That I'm sorry, I didn't look at this hard enough, but I apologize. I thought there was another category like restoration or mm -hmm. some, something that's not there. Yeah, so there are four different categories that are um, considered mm -hmm. preservation treatment methods, and rehabilitation is one of them. Restoration, stabilization, and then preservation itself are the others. Um, so I... Um, Sarah, can you please scroll up to the page before this? On it, uh, there's a preservation. Okay, so we may want to. This is a good question, Linda. We may want to add um, something in here about the four different treatment methods, Sarah. Um, per the U.S. Secretary of the Interior's uh, guidelines, we might want to put that in the historic section. Um, okay. These are the definitions from the CPA legislation okay. that outline what types of projects are allowable. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go into the amount of detail that's really useful to historic applicants. Um, 
but maybe better suited to that particular section. Okay, well, we can look at that when we look at the, that section. Uh, Sarah, can you go to the beginning of this, of these definitions? Okay, so you, you do you do state that terms from the Massachusetts Community Preservation Act. Okay, great. And you will define agricultural preservation restriction there, correct? Okay. Yes, I will. Uh, any other uh, comments on the administrative section? Yeah, I got one other one. Chris? Um, um, and I wish I had thought about this sooner, but because um, it, 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 it could be a bigger kettle of fish than we want to open. There have been occasions where, and this is particularly um, when we're being asked to fund like a, um, a, a fund rather than a project, um, where my gut was to, particularly when we had additional fund, additional monies and we weren't in a tight wallet situation, um, my, my, my gut was telling me that this was an opportunity for us to bank a little money in, in those accounts. Um, so what I'm really getting at is, uh, do we wanna consider including language and is this the appropriate spot to do it that allows us to allocate funds in excess of the amount that's being requested? Sarah, have we ever done that before? Uh, no. We could. There is no stipulation that says we we cannot do that. No, a city council could not do that, but the CPC is free to do that. Chris, is there a is there a specific language that or a, a place? No, and I hadn't really of... thought about it, but the, and I'm trying to remember the instance where this came up. Um, it might have been the affordable housing funding uh, discussion we had a year ago, where they were asking for a certain amount of money, and and my my feeling was, yes, we want to give them this, and we may just want to give them a little more because right now we have the money, and we don't, you know, we don't want to be put in a position at some future time where we can't do that. I mean, obviously. You know, we do this, we replenish the supply for for Wayne's fund almost almost every year. Um, uh, but there there could come a time where we just don't have it um, and the demand is there. So that's why I was wondering if this is the appropriate place to do it. Um, I think it is uh, on page 12. Where we just talked about uh, you know, the partial, well, it, it is uh, where we talk about partial funding. You can put in Chris's idea of, you know, allowing that flexibility to uh, to exceed the, the requested amount. It's page twelve, um, number six B would be the section. I think you could add Chris's uh, suggestion. I mean, I don't know. Is this something we even want to do? I, I think it's a good idea to have the flexibility. But could could can't we just ask them to amend their application for a higher amount? And it, it, there's something a little odd about our at spending more than has been asked for. But if something comes up and there's a particular need. Um, that we feel would help make the project successful, it seems to me we could ask them to amend their request and then we'd be acceding to their request. There's, there's, there's just something a little awkward about our somewhat gratuitously upping, upping the request. I think if in discussion there is some hole or some potential need or some improvement or some something that will um, benefit the project with their consent, they could, uh, if they agree with that, they could amend their application. Uh, 
Uh, Chris, how, how do you feel about that? I, I, I mean, I'm comfortable with it. I think my problem, my problem is, is that at least in my, in, it, it, you know, my, my personal experience has been, I usually don't have that idea until we get to the shopping cart moment. And, <laughs> and, uh, um, and also because, you know, just to cover myself, um, it's not until then that we realize that we might have an extra couple thousand here or there lying around. But I, no, I understand. I understand Linda's point, and I think it's I think it's well made that you know, um, having having the, uh, the 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 argument made by the applicant for additional funding is probably useful for us um, as as we you know have to explain explain our actions. I mean, if the committee ever decided to do that, I'm just saying that you may modify the project, may cover that. And it probably will come up so rarely that it might not be something you want to solidify. Yeah, I'm good with that. So and, if we're wrong, and if we're wrong, we can fix it next time. <laughs> so may modify the project would include uh, Would 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 that meet your needs, Linda? In terms of, I mean, that that again is almost uh, unilaterally we are modifying the project, but it's a little more subtle, so I'm okay with it. Okay, so are we good with leaving language as it is. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, I'm good. Everybody else, Dan, Martha. The the only thing I think we're good on our end for the committee. Maybe just so we, we capture a combination of Linda and Chris's ideas. Uh, maybe maybe one more in that section, uh, you know, a line about the applicant's ability to submit a, an amendment. You know, just so that's that's clear that they have that that option. You know, you know needs change. You know, various funding coming together for a project. You know, they could have more or less. So, I just didn't. I didn't see at least the word of amendment there for making it clear applicants can file an amended application um, should that be necessary. Um, How was that, Dan? Oh, sorry, I was. I've, I'm, I've had the Google Doc on the other side. So, uh, so gonna... just saying that applicants may amend project applications if necessary. That's great. That's great. Okay. And that reflects the committee's practices in any case. Yep. Uh, Jana, this is good. Good with you. Everybody, good on this. Great. Um, other comments on the administrative section. Uh, if we were to adopt that uh, sort of that, that special um, checklist that Hingham had and modify it to reflect what our what our committee's um, issues are, would that go in the administrative section, sir? I, I think it would. So there's, um, there are general review criteria. Or at least I thought there were. Um, oh yes, here we are. So, um, these are the these eleven points are the general review criteria. Um, so I was thinking of incorporating these into that checklist and then adding a, a little subsection for each program area. Uh, the Hingham checklist had quite a few more than this. Is that correct? It did. I think some of those were more specific to other program areas, but. Um, uh, is this something that you want to work on 
revising that checklist and incorporating it as as a sort of a, 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 a in bold section of its own. Uh, well, general uh, criteria for project evaluation or, or just enhance this nine points that you have or nine, nine or 10. Uh, yeah, here we go. Because this is quite a bit more um, involved than ours. And then we move into the specific category, which we would we would take from our from our plan rather than what what they have, although they have some some good ones as well. Uh, do people like having this as a checklist, something that we could have in front of us when deciding? I mean, is it is it appropriate to to have it this formalized? I guess. I like the idea. I, I think it, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think when I went back and, and looked at the plan, I went, oh yeah, that's right. That's in it. That's a criteria. Oh yeah. yeah and most of these things are, are in the plan in one way or another, but right. certainly not in one place. So the, yeah, the one placeness of it, I think is, would be really helpful. Uh, how do other people feel? Yeah, I agree. I think it's important not only for our decision making, but also for the applicants uh, to better understand why we make the choices that we do. Um, so I would advocate for including it in the upfront. <clears throat> okay. I can uh, Chris? To the next draft. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, again, as long as as long as um, we don't end up feeling that it's tying our hands in any way, I'm, I'm, I, I think it's, I think, I think Martha's point is, 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 is good that it it gives people a flavor for our decision making process, so it will help them to tailor their proposals accordingly. Dan. I agree. I, I like having a system like this. I, I think it'll help us make a case for one project over another one with, you know, all using the same criteria. And I think it'll, it'll present, you know, more fair to, to applicants to understand how we're making our decisions. Shannon? Agreed. And, you know, my experience on the planning board has been that when we have, um, you know, really clear criteria on which we're making decisions that as other people have said, it helps applicants kind of address those criteria head on, which helps us make decisions, but also at their best, they help um, members of the public to come forward and say, I support this project, not just because I have a pretty tree in my backyard, but also because it actually supports these very specific written criteria that have been sort of agreed to on a citywide basis. So I think it, it gives all members of the process a sort of shared vocabulary um, and can just sort of strengthen and ease those conversations. So having it in one place helps that process instead of sending people to six different places to look for the relevant list. Great. Uh, Sarah, you can modify that checklist to incorporate our specific criteria for different categories. Yes. I will do that. And that could be then available to the public for public comment. We can take a look at that again in two weeks. Great. Uh, Can I just follow up with some on something that Jana just said um, because we we haven't had an experience like this, but clearly, it, wearing her other hat, Jana has. Has it been your experience that um, applicants have come back to you and used the criteria to make an argument against the decision that 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 the, the, the that y'all had made, i.e., you know, how could you decide it that way? That's not what your criteria says. Um, well, yes, they can use the criteria to sort of question or potentially appeal a decision. If that were happening, though, the appeal would typically not come directly to us. It would go to a different body. So, um, but yes, I think they, they do inform the process and um, applicants who are particularly familiar with the, pro the process or have 
what may be a more controversial project um, tend to um, kind of do their homework more in terms of going through the specific criteria um, and addressing those head on. And similarly, members of the public who've done their homework um, and are trying to make a better case will will certainly, you know, use them in that way. I don't, I, I think in our case, um, we're more held to the criteria that we've set out. We don't have as much um, leeway as I think this committee does, but I think that's also appropriate to the two bodies and to the processes that we have to follow. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid of putting these out there and then having it sort of come back to bite us if that's what's part of what's behind your question. That is in fact exactly what's behind. <laughs> Um, and I'll just add to that, we, oh gosh, this was many years ago and it was funded by community preservation. Um, we in the um, on the historical commission, the local historic district, which is Elm Street and the Clark School property, um, we developed a set of um, guidelines for uh, the historical commission and also for property owners to know um, what was acceptable and not acceptable to do to their with their properties in making changes, and that it's been invaluable because um, before we had them, the decisions were kind of you know in some ways arbitrary. They weren't based on much, and these really define um, in a pretty clear way what's acceptable and what isn't. And they were developed you know through a a, a, pro, a public process, and uh, so I think. Um, you know, they have, I would say they probably have been questioned. We recently had them questioned for some window replacement that was wanting to be done. Um, and the applicant appealed our decision and it got rejected. But um, I think in the overall, and I've been involved with the district in a long, long time and I also live in it. Um, I think it's very, very helpful. And Chris, you came to us for Look at his smile. You came to us. I don't know if that was before we had the guidelines or after, but um, I don't recall. But I, I, I do remember the flavor of the conversation, and and there was a moment there where I felt we weren't going to be able to move forward. Um, but what happened was cooler heads prevailed, and a couple of people on the commission spoke up, um, basically saying we. You know, we're looking at something where it's going to be too onerous for the homeowner and, and, and the furtherance of, of, of our goals here don't really aren't, aren't, aren't being aren't our goals aren't being furthered by what it is that the, the, the sticking point is that we're sitting on here it was literally moving a window six inches to the left. Mm -hmm. And and um, and uh, I can't remember who it was, but I think it might have been Dave Drake said, I'm not going to make these people open up an additional wall so they can move a window. Mm -hmm. um, which I thought was, which I thought was good. And, and, and the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, I, I like having that flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. But, but um, I also think that um, uh, the historic district is performing a function that's a little bit different than what we are. And I think the gym oh, yeah. is, yeah. And I think that Jana was getting at that as well. So I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm just, you know, I just, just raise that cautionary cautionary flag <laughs> but i actually found that my experience with the, with the the commission to be a, a really positive one uh because it reaffirmed for me the the um the effectiveness of local involvement in community in community decisions it really actually uh, made me feel good about local government so that's good it's cool yeah good um i was that a hand did you somebody know um, so we're leaving it with Sarah to revise these general guidelines to incorporate some of the specifics that we have for each program to perhaps put a line there seeing these are uh, guidelines. Uh, wow, well, and something about us maintaining the ability to be flexible with them. Uh, and then we'll have a chance to look at that again in two weeks. You can have that for the general public comment on the plan. Yes. Great. Good. Thank you, Sarah. And that was good to in, incorporate that. Make sure you take Hingham out of it and put it Northampton. Yes. That yes. would be embarrassing. <laughs> there true. are actually, there are several communities that use Northampton's plan as a model and didn't delete all of the references. Oh, no. 
And also oh, make, make sure if it says town, make sure it says city. That's another one that often doesn't get changed. Yeah. Uh, where is Hingham? Anyone know? Yeah, it's out the Boston on the coast. Oh, there you go. You can take a ferry from Hingham to Boston as a commuter. Really? Well, uh, any other suggestions or comments for the general administrative section? Are we good to go? Okay, Sarah, I'm going to guide us to the next sure. section. So I think I'll go from the with the sections with the most changes first, so that people don't get tired at the end. Uh, so the the section with the most updates was definitely historic preservation, um, primarily resulting from the committee's discussions about potential funding of private buildings. Uh, so a few edits here. Uh, referencing historic structures reports and historic landscapes reports and providing a little bit more information about the Secretary of the Interior's standards and guidelines. Um, time, time and reference updates here. And then a pretty substantial section was added regarding privately owned historic resources. Comments or questions, issues? Uh, looking to you, Martha. As our, I just saw, uh, I wanted to just mention that, uh, as you all know, because you were intimately involved in this, uh, we are going to be, we mean the uh, Historical Commission is uh, going to be launching a historic uh, preservation planning project for the city or citywide. And um, the recommendations of that will get incorporated into this, we'll need to get incorporated into this. So I think that the, um, the opportunities part of this, uh, is it needs and possibilities. I think those are two areas of this section that need to get elaborated on, um, but the planning needs to get done first. So I think Sarah's done a great job of updating it, but uh, you know, if possible, we, uh, we can amend this after the plan is done. But I also will say the historical commission met Monday night and we did review this and I think people felt uh, in general, um, you know, favorable towards it. And, and when will that document be available? Sarah? Yeah, my um, name next year at some point. The process is beginning now, so the, the consultant will be working through the summer. If, if, uh, if they provide significant additional material we feel was important to include in this plan, are we able to do a, if, if we were to revise our plan, we have to have a public hearing on that, and is that correct? Yeah, definitely. So we can, we can make another plan update when the preservation plan is complete. Okay. And that might be in a year or a year and a half or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, getting back to this privately owned historic resources, did people have a chance to look at this? Sarah's indicated that there's been uh, questions coming to her from other private businesses downtown who caught wind of the Michelson issue and are inquiring as to uh, similar possibilities of funding. So this certainly may come up again. Uh, comments, comments on this, anybody? Uh, this, this is, I, I noticed that in, in Hingham, they made some reference to other funding sources and other resources and um, as you may recall, that was sort of a sticking point for me. And I think we need to find some way to um, be, be able to inquire into the necessity for CPA funds when a private owner may have their own capacity, but obviously a preference for somebody else picking up the tab. And um, I'm not sure that that's 
the sentiment of other members of the committee, and I don't think it's in here, but it, it is an issue, a continuing issue for me, particularly now that I hear that others may be. Have so I, I took a years. wild stab and indicated that CPA funds should account for no more than 75% of a project's total cost. I, I made that number up. If the committee wants to put together some other number that makes sense, then that's totally fine. Uh, and then added where we had previously what other funds will support this project. So I added have other resources and then spelled some of those out and applied for. And then also what are plans and capabilities for continued maintenance in, into the future. I don't know that the, I thought the 75% was a grab out of the air, but um, um, I think I'd rather have a concept than, uh, than a number. Um, looking at Hingham's, they talk about uh, alternative capital, no other capital sources would be available to, to fund the project. Um, I think that's a little, I, I wouldn't go that far. Um, we, we, we can ask that question. Are other capital funds available for this project? And under B, Hingham also talks about proposals rank higher if they demonstrate financial need. Um, and I know there was discomfort about inquiring into somebody's finances, but I, I, I think it's appropriate to put a burden on them to make a case that they need it, however they feel they can make that case. And then we can determine whether they've adequately made it or not. Sarah, you think about language there or should we step back? I, and so I, I think we're, we're maybe mixing up two different sections of the, the plan. So that the Hingham document is just the decision criteria. It's not necessarily uh, reflective of the entire plan. So some of that may be in other places. Like, um, let's see, like uh, one of the general review criteria for all projects is leverages additional public and or private funds or demonstrates that other funding sources are not ready, readily available or sufficient. But Lynn, I don't know if that's specific enough to capture your concern. I think it's important to um, to add it again in this 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 section because I think this is this is where the issue is going to arise most frequently. So. Uh, with historic preservation. So Sarah, can you that's, copy? That's where we're gonna have the issue of, of private ownership and um, for-profit, generally for-profit enterprises as opposed to non, non-profit or governmental, which tend to fall into the other categories. Can you copy those sentences, Sarah, you reference and, and uh, put them into this ownership and financing section? So, that, but that's already in the plan. I don't know if we wanna selectively pull general criteria into individual sections. So there, there's review, review criteria for each type of project submitted. And then these would be specific to historic preservation. So copying it verbatim, I don't know. I, I'm not sure would be really helpful, but if there's a specific consideration for historic projects then we should add that here. I'm, I'm hearing Linda say, let me correct me if I'm wrong, that it's worth reiterating or repeating because of its, uh, because of this whole conundrum of private ownership that it bears repetition in this section, even though it is, um, it's important for all, all of the different sections. Oh, um... I'll amend what I said. <laughs> Sarah, if you're gonna, if, if it's gonna show up in the decision, in this one pager or whatever decision guidelines. It will. Pr yeah. Prominently, then I guess it, it doesn't need to be repeated. I, I think I was responding more to it being sort of buried in the plan 
And if you're reading the historic preservation section, that's not going to come clear to you. But if it's referenced in the in the cheat sheet, I, yes. I think people's attention Definitely will be drawn will. to it. So I guess I would I would be okay there with that approach. Uh, Dan? Well, thanks for thanks for repeating my earlier comment, Brian. I do think it's it's an important area that, that Linda's highlighting and what I what I haven't seen here, and I don't know if we have it historically or, or another community has it, is how do you define uh, demonst you know, demonstrating financial need? You know, right now, this section is talking about CPA funds wouldn't be more than 75% of the, the project's budget. But that, that does, you know, this specific area and the general one, I, I don't think it, there, there's a place that really defines how to demonstrate whether a nonprofit or for-profit entity you know, what their what their financial situation is. So I mean, if, there, if there's a, you know, an objective, fair way, you know, some, some kind of um, resource to, to request or, or give as an example of how an applicant can demonstrate financial need, regardless of the type of entity they are, I think that would be helpful to put somewhere just a, a little more detail on what that, what that looks like beyond a project budget. That, that's the issue we really struggled with this last time with Michelson mm -hmm. is, is it uh, within our domain to ascertain whether or not they have the finances to support doing this? And, and, and I think we were, we, there was disagreement in the committee in terms of were we qualified to, to, to do that? And some people felt we should do our due diligence and somehow get hold of that information. Others felt it was... It was not that that uh, a, a, an organization or a business can sort of give us, feed us what it is that uh, they they want. So it's a it's a tricky one, and worthy of uh, maybe more discussion right now. Of, of do we want to include requiring some sort of financial reporting that uh, makes the case particularly with a private business, that funding is essential. How, how do other people feel? I, I think that if, you know, we, I know this, there was discomfort in the last discussion about, um, you know, just our qualifications to review the financials of these organizations. Um, I, I think one of the, of the things that, that I'm most concerned about in this um, with the privately owned enterprises is one, um, the definition of public um, access. And I think that is pretty clearly defined in the, the criteria. But then the other thing is, well, there are two things. One is, um, you know, do we need to require that they go through those steps that are necessary to assure that they are um, going about preservation in a way that conforms to the U.S. Secretary of the Interior standards? And, and the way of doing that is to insist on having either um, a historic structures report or a cultural landscape report before they do any kind of physical work. So that's one. And then the other piece of this is just that I think well, I mentioned the um, public interest um, is that do we do we state that a, a preservation is restriction is required? You know, Mass Historic, whenever they fund any um, project that involves actual restoration work or preservation work, they place a preservation restriction on the on the property. And, you know, do we have the ability to do that? You know, can we? Uh, I mean, that's something that we demanded of the Michelson decision. You know, can we do that for any decision we make about a private, um, privately owned building or a landscape? You know, should that be a requirement? So is that something we say to the public, we're gonna put a restriction on this if you're, you know, you accept our funding. So they know that going in. Because I would imagine right now that's probably what's holding up the pres the uh, Michelson Gallery. I, I don't know for a fact, but I think that would be one thing, because it's going to affect the value where they're building and their ability to resell it. Um, a lot of things. 
Martha, you just made two points. One is the requirement of a, of a historic preservation of historic preservation restriction, and the first one was the the what? That they um, that a historic structures report be completed um, prior to any actual physical restoration work being done on the building. So that was done at the um, at, at the um, Smith Charities building before we funded any work on that building. It's also been done at Historic Northampton. Um, they go about that on a regular basis. You know, that's something that we could require. It, it, how, how onerous is that for, um, is, it, is it costly? Does it... it um, yeah, there's a cost associated with it, but it's also something we as a, um, we could fund through CPA. So if a private enterprise is wanting to come to us for money to preserve their building, then we say to them, okay, well, you know, you need to do this report, um, you know, get experts in first. So we know that the work that's being done that we're financing eventually is being done according to standards. Again, this is all to protect the, pr protect the public investment. So we're watching Sarah Worker magic here. These are just uh, I'm just suggesting some, you know, it's for food for thought. Uh, Sarah, there would uh, uh, rather, do you want to define restriction there in that line? A historic preservation restriction will be required. Uh, it's, it's sort of referencing the, the line of okay. mm -hmm. necessary. So those are two fairly major uh, requirements that Martha is uh, proposing. How do other people feel about that? Uh, Janet? Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It does strike me that I think in, in other uh, parts of this conversation, we've been talking about, you know, wanting to give ourselves a little bit of leeway in terms of decision making of for our own criteria. Um, and so putting in, you know, language that's this restrictive about we absolutely will require exactly this of this particular kind of applicant is a case of sort of doing the opposite of restricting our own ability and restricting applicants ability. So um, I, I guess personally, I think I would sort of err more on the side of um, using this, you know, very useful and extensive set of guidelines to try to guide our decision making and, and maybe say something more like, you know, a restriction um, in most cases will be required for, you know, privately owned projects or something like that. Um, but, but I agree with, again, with comments made earlier in the process that, you know, giving ourselves a little bit more room when I think we legitimately have it um, may make sense. Um, because I think ultimately, you know, there are lots of other points in this process and in these, these lines of questioning that will, will help us guide decisions about what's appropriate to a particular project. And, and Jana, you're suggesting that for both the restriction as well as the stru historic structures report? I think so, yes. So um, because than... I think as, as we experienced in this last round, we can choose to require either one of those things, but it doesn't lock us into doing so. Um, and if we think that we might do so in most cases, we can reference that. And I think it probably is appropriate to if there's a way to do so to sort of put in language that makes very clear that we'll be kind of um, that privately owned projects are going to go under extra scrutiny to make sure that they're meeting these criteria and protecting the use of public funds, but not um, um, again, locking us in. So yes, I think in, in both cases, I would sort of leave, leave us with choices. Martha, can you, see a situation where we would uh, give, give a grant to a privately owned resource and not ask for historic preservation restriction? Uh, I can't. I think it's a really important thing to do to, again, protect the public investment. Um, 
because the need is so great. <laughs> There's so many privately owned historic buildings in Northampton um, and many of them you could make a case they have great, um, they're serving a great public function. Um, so that's, I, I, I can't see it. I think it, it would be something that um, would have to be done. And I think that, um, you know, with Michelson and going back to the historic structures report, we don't really know the quality. Of, we don't really know what they were going to be doing to that building. It, it was never really evaluated um, by any kind of preservation mason or, um, you know, structural engineer from what I, from what I reviewed. And I think that's really important. Again, it's, it's protecting the public's money. Uh, Martha, would you advocate that uh, under the historic structures report section that, that that be more rigid, a historic structures report will be completed for all privately owned resources, if not already in place? Well, I think to um, respect Jana's opinion, I do think that um, it probably is smart to leave some flexibility. And I think it can be written in a way to say that the, um, the Community Preservation Committee you know, may um, require this or has the right to require this. Um, so take probably, out the will, take out yeah. the will and put may. Yeah. And you'd be good that good with that, Martha? I think so, yeah. But again, if that were to come in front of us and I were on the committee, I would strongly advocate for it. Why don't we say will generally so it's clear that the presumption is that it will go in that direction and it doesn't have to be initiated each time anew by the committee, but the presumption would be that it would, but unless there's a good reason not to. Yeah, that sounds good. Do you want to change that uh, historic structures report sentence to be a little more prescriptive as well? Um, we could say something like, um, uh, historic structures report or um, evaluation, evaluated, evaluation by a qualified preservation professional um, is required prior to application or, um, you know, prior to the application be considered. Can I ask a clarifying question about that? Because I thought part of what was discussed was that they might be able to actually use uh, funding for that? Are you suggesting that private applicants wouldn't be able to use private funding? I'm, I'm sorry, our public funding for that? No, I think that it's something that we need to require and whether it's something that they um, apply for funds to do, that, that, that would be fine too. And I think that's what we said to Michelson, right? Not about the, well, yeah, I, actually, no, I'm, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. But if we're saying it's required before they apply, then we need to somehow make it clear that they can submit an original application to fund the that part of the process. Um, I just will point out broadly that one of the things about the that we've seen on the planning board as well is that sometimes adding in too many restrictions can sort of discourage people from applying. Um, so that's, I, I, I guess I just want to sort of point that out here. I think all of this is appropriate and generally requiring these things is probably appropriate, but um, you know, temper that with understanding that it may discourage some applicants from applying and therefore for maybe doing some historic preservation work that they might otherwise want to do the more onerous we make the process. Um, so that's that may be a fine trade-off, but um, I think it's a reality we need to acknowledge. Uh, does this section capture the the, uh, the availability of CPC fund, CPA funding for historic structures reports? Do you think the preparation of historic structures reports can be part of an applicant's match for a project, or could constitute a separate CPA, CPA application in advance of work? Uh, Martha, that's 
good for you? Yeah, I think that's what we're intending. Yeah, and Jana, that works for you as well? Was that a yes from you, Jan? Yeah, sorry. I just realized my thumbs up is probably invisible when we're all very small, but yes. Brian, I think there's a third option, Sarah, which is that um, they could self-fund initially and then roll it into the application, hoping that it will be successful. Your wording almost makes it seem that they have to separate apply, put in two different applications and you know, if it's a large project, they there's lot, lots of upfront costs that often uh, need to initially be assumed by the app. I, I tried to capture that by saying it can be part of an applicant's match. But it could also, I mean, it's at risk money, but they could also ask, roll it into the, the one application. And get reimbursement, okay. or is it is it not possible? Is I, I don't know that we would want to fund work if we didn't know what the work was. So if they're if they're asking for funding for a historic structures report and then saying sort of blindly, please give me money to do whatever it says. I don't know if that's a really a viable option. No, I'm sorry. I'm I I don't think I'm being clear. If they do, if they obtain a historic structures report prior to submitting the application, they tailor the application to the report and then ask for funding, which would cover the cost of the report. Is that a problem because it's been- We, we couldn't fund that, heard. that's not legal. Okay, okay, okay. So anything, any work completed prior to signing of a contract is ineligible for reimbursement. And I think you've made that pretty clear in the, in language that we cannot fund any work prior. Right to the point. Can you go back to those two sentences again, Sarah? So we can get some closure on that. Um, do we want, getting back again to the historic structures report, do we want to modify that language to be a little more uh, prescriptive the way that we've done with the um, with historic preservation restriction or are we good with the language that that Sarah's put there. Uh, Martha. I think um, I think this is fine. Uh, essentially, it's a it was it will it would be something that we would look at in reviewing the application and if it an applicant came up short, then I certainly that would be a flag for us, me, I'll, I would imagine. So I, I think it's fine. Um, it does allow some flexibility, but I think it makes it pretty clear that it's, it's desired. So I think we, we dealt with those two issues that uh, Martha, thank you, brought up. And also respond to Jana's uh, suggestions that it that it gives some leeway for the applicants as well as for ourselves. If in fact, for whatever possibility is is deemed too onerous, um, is it, is everybody else good with these two sentences or these two additions? Uh, Dan, I'm good as is. I was there's one other option if you if you wanted to go at it, you know, just something like CPC strongly encourages applicants to obtain a historic structure report prior to applying, you know, if, if you wanted to, you know, put more emphasis on it, but I'm, I'm fine with it as is, unless, unless that's desired to add, add that additional line. Uh, Chris? Um, I, I understand where Dan's going with that, but I think it sort of runs afoul of the um, idea that we would allow them to request funding for that um, because 
Sarah made it clear that work that's been done previously can't can't be funded. So I'm not sure how to reconcile the two of those. And then when we get done here, I have a I have a, a clause I would love to see added to the decision guidelines. So I agree. I'll, I'll withdraw it. I agree that there's language already that makes it clear you can you can apply just to get funds for the historic structures report alone, and you know it can be part of a broader application. So. Good. Linda? I'm good on this, but I did want to return uh, to a couple of other issues when you're ready to go there, Brian. One, one is the definitional issues that uh, were, we talked about in the admin report, and we we're going to revisit those, the restoration, preservation, so forth. Uh, okay, so uh, so that's going back to the admin portion, Linda. No, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, no, it's going to the historic preservation section. We said that we would, or have Martha relook <laughs> uh, at the definitions once we got into this section. So this is um, Sarah has listed this. Yes, right, exactly, on page one and two. And there is a hyperlink here, you just can't see it. It's buried under the underline. So that's under the Secretary of the Interior's standards, correct? Yeah. That's a hyperlink, okay. Um, so I think what you're asking, Linda, and it's not a bad question, is whether we need to uh, define what those um, different treatment methods are is sort of bullets under this um, section. Yes. And it's if it's confusing to and, you. And, and there's different summaries too, because this talks about acquisition, preservation, rehabilitation, and restoration. And then I think on the next page, it uses a couple of, it, it, it doesn't repeat the same terms. So I, not being very well versed in this, I, get, I do get lost. Okay. So, so Sarah, do you and I want to talk about this? Um, we don't have to solve it in this group tonight. We could talk about it. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to do it that would make sense. I, in, in some ways, if an applicant has no clue about any of these, I would hope that they would do some additional research before applying. I hope they wouldn't get to that stage. Um, but it is a question that comes up. So we, we could certainly expand on that, I think. Uh, the, the, and the confusion, Martha, you would... the confusion sorry, for ahead. instance, is under resources. Um, mm -hmm. There's another summary and it says the Community Preservation Act authorizes the CPC to make recommendations for the acquisition and preservation of historic resources. Earlier talks about preservation, re restoration, you know, so it's just. Yeah, so the second. Sometimes it's a summary, sometimes it's, yeah. it's just a little confusing. So this, the sec, I believe what's listed under resources there are, are referring to the act itself. Is that correct, Sarah? It's probably the language yes. of the act. Yeah, which is a different thing from the secretary, your secretary of the interior standards. Um, so we. We may want to clarify that language just so people aren't confused. Martha, do you feel comfortable going over this with Sarah? I do. We, we can revisit it. Yep. Are, are, are we allowed, uh, Sarah, next uh, two, two weeks from now in the public comments section, once the public has commented, and hopefully folks will, can, can we go back over these few changes and are we able to? incorporate that into that agenda? Sure. Um, I'll have to figure out a way to make them so that the plan is readable and doesn't get lost. Um, maybe I'll send all of you a version that has track changes and make a, a version available for the public that doesn't have them on because it's it's hard to read as a standalone document. That would be that great if you're able to do that. And Martha, you and Sarah can get together before that in yeah, the next few can. days to, to yes. figure that out. Yep. Um, Linda, that 
meets your needs for clarification? That, that would be wonderful if they did that. Thank you. Great. Uh, Chris, you had a section that you wanted addressed in within this section? Uh, it's not so much addressed, but on page six, there was a phrase that, because I've been trying to figure out how to wrestle with um, this potential flood of applicants, um, private entity applicants. Um, let me see if I can see on this little screen here what it says here. Oh yeah, it's the phrase about sentence uh, about five lines down that begins spending of any municipal funds to advance a private purpose would violate the anti-aid amendment. Um, I, I, I just I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write that on a piece of paper and stick it on my mirror. Is there clarification, uh, Chris, that you're looking for in terms of? No, I just, I just what, like what that. I, I, that was a refreshing piece of 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 uh, verbiage for me because I was like, okay, you know, what happens? What happens to us if a, a business comes forward and says, you know, it's historic preservation um, and it's being done part of our remodel, et cetera, et cetera? And I'm like, wait a second. You know, what are you doing here? Are you doing historic preservation or are you building a new display area? Um, so I just, I wanted to take that piece of uh, language and, and stick it in my back pocket because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna need it at some point. Uh, and, but otherwise this language is okay with you? Yeah, no, I think, I think this is really good. I think it helps clarify what were, you know, murky waters and I, I appreciate what, um, uh, what Linda and Martha were, were doing on the back and forth there. So, um, uh, you know, it's, it, it's tough stuff. It's tough stuff. Sarah, can you link, put in a hyperlink to the anti-aid amendment? Would that be something to add? You have right there where it is, but there's no, no way to get there. Uh oh, yeah. aid just- It may be there anyway. The hyperlinks get very, with track changes, and, I will make sure that a, that's there. Another A. Reading the anti-aid amendment does not clarify anything. It however. doesn't. No, <laughs> but we can. But we can still link it. These are all really good suggestions. Um, of other historic preservation comments for this section. Uh, I'm not quite sure where we are at on the financing part of it. How did we resolve that? that so, so here is the, just, here are the items that need to be included in an application. Is there something specific regarding finances that should be required that isn't in here currently that would help to resolve that? It is a conundrum of how to ascertain the financial status of of a business that 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 comes to us for a private business. And I, I I I think Dan and I see this a little more, maybe more than a little differently. I am fine with putting the onus. I think it's very hard to be prescriptive because there are so many different types of applicants, so many different types of projects um, that putting the burden on the applicant to say that they have to demonstrate to the committee's satisfaction. And I, I know that leaves it open, but um, they get to choose what they wanna put forward. And if it's not convincing, we're not convinced. I agree with you, Linda. I, I think it, you know, it, it, it's a different time now, and we're looking at you know, the, the guidelines without a specific project project in front of us. And uh, you know, I was worried about consistency in, in the last funding round, but now I, I think I, I totally agree with that that direction that, that every applicant would see that same language and have to be responsive with demonstrating financial need. Great, thanks. Do, do people like the 
the sentence that uh, Sarah just wrote. Are we good with that? Is that a nodding yes? Okay. It's a thinking. It's a thinking yes. I just wonder if we want to say, explain in detail why CPA funding is necessary and the, and the applicant uh, um, requires, um, I'm, I'm not thinking clearly on, uh, is there another section of that to further reiterate why, why we need that information? Um, it's a, would it be possible to ask that they demonstrate that they would have exhausted other sources of funding? I think that was one of the issues with Michelson is, um, you know, loans are pretty cheap right now and the building was worth a lot of money. They didn't have a lien on it and they were coming to us for, you know, um, a relatively small amount of money compared to what the building is worth. Um, and we never really got an answer out of them out of what, you know, why they didn't just go to a bank and borrow the money. Um, you know, why us? So that would be one way of doing it. If that's, po you know, that people feel comfortable with that or it's even legal to ask that, I have no idea. But. Mm, there you go. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, that was always useful to look at look at something written and work work with it. How do people like this sentence? Explain in detail why CPA funding is necessary and if applicable, why private funding is not possible. Private finance is not possible. Is that yes, I would I would imagine in most cases private financing might be possible, but whether it's you know optimal or desirable or you know, fits into the rest of the business plan or whatever else. I mean, I think that that would be nearly impossible for most businesses to meet that criteria. That is simply not possible to get further private financing. I mean, I'm not a business financing expert, but I think there's usually some option out there. Uh, appropriate rather than feasible? Is that a... Does that help, Jan? I don't know. This continues to be a very tricky area. I mean, I, I like, I prefer the language of sort of demonstrated financial need more than specifying particular kinds of um, financing. But I think anything that, uh, anything that gets us into the, specific details of the financing of a private business and you know what level of um, leveraging and so forth that they're willing to accept is is just a sort of beyond our purview personally. But I think you know explaining in detail the financial need for the project and for CPA funding specifically hopefully will lead them to address both here's why you know we have, not pursued or exhausted our, our other alternatives and why we think that this is the right place to get this money. I like that. How does that sentence go with people? Nodding heads, Linda? Um. I, I, my only hesitation as to whether that is to whether this will be misinterpreted as, okay, so I have to link up the budget to where the CPA funds are going to go. You know that be, that they're going to try be trying to say, well, it will pay for these particular items. That's why I need CPC funding. 
It's going to go for the roof. It's going to go for the blah, 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 the mechanicals. It's going to go for. Is there alternative words you can suggest? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask that, and I don't have them. <laughs> well, I, I, let's keep in mind this is a work in progress. We're not voting on a final document now. We can sit on this, and if things occur to us, uh, we can incorporate them into, I mean, I think ideally it would be two weeks from now, once we hear public comment. And if we thought some of these lines over, we can uh, um, take a look at them. Sarah's gonna send out another version for us to us to look at. And again, sort of hi highlighting these, these uh, suggestions that we made tonight would be helpful and, and we can sleep on that. Um, does that, is that, can, can, sh should we leave this as it is for now and move on? Are we good with that? Yes. I'm seeing nods. Linda, okay. Yeah, we'll kick the can. Okay, kicking the can. Anything else on the historic preservation component? The, the only thing is the, uh, where we're talking about the broad, public interest, that's such good language and it, and it applies for all projects. So it might just be a case of, there's some really good language here to maybe consider either moving to the administrative overview section or, or just having it in both places. I, I, I like the language Chris liked and you know, some of this, um, you know, what's the, the, the purpose of CPA, the public purpose, the uh, the broad public interest language. This is really good. Do we want applicants to tell us that, or do we want to specifically include that in the general review criteria? I mean, it does say advances a public purpose, but doesn't doesn't elaborate on what that is. Where, where does it say advance public purpose? Oh, okay. okay. Um, was there additional verbiage that you saw, Dan, that you'd like to put in there? This is just what we have on under privately owned historic resources, where there's just general explanation of what CPA funds are allowed for or not allowed for but on page six. It's just, just a note if, if Sarah wanted to look at, at that, it's just really good in the historic section to see, you know, should some of that also appear in the in the overview section, just because it's a, I just found it, it really resonates of, you know, why, you know, why this, uh, these types of funds exist, and what, what they're for and not for. And we, yeah. we, we do have some of that. Um, do you think we should add additional language here, Dan? I, I think the language here in the historic part is good. I, my, my question is just, should some of that also appear in the overview section? Just because it's it's really good general language that if people are starting with an overview, you know, looking all across the types of projects, it, it's just, it, it's some of the most interesting language just explaining what CPA funds are broadly you know, across all these programs. And this would go where again, Dan? Uh, just, I, I think this could go in the, in the overview. The, the overview meaning the checklist? The... Just in the, the kind of introductory language of the the administration and overview section I think could just benefit you know where, where we're explaining defining the community preservation act so you want to scroll up for that opening section it's, it's not a must I just I found some of that just be it was just really compelling language in the historic section that could we, we may just want to use some of it in the overview as well. Probably this, so the CPA in Northampton, 
uh, scroll down, Sarah, another. Uh, so you're thinking uh, at the top there, resulting in grant awards to put in, sort of that reiterate with that same paragraph about um, must meet a private, must meet the public good. Would yeah, that go maybe, there? Maybe just under the definition of the Community Preservation Act. You know, you could you could bring some of that language up into that that section just because it's it's just really helpful to understand the the purpose of the act. A, a uh, lot maybe. of that, a lot of that language though is specific to pr uh, privately owned uh, properties because of the anti aid amendment. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it doesn't really transpose well to to all applicants i just didn't know if there you know it could be a an affordable housing applicant or you know there's another categories that or we could get into similar issues but i, I agree i mean I, it's mostly mostly applies historic i'll leave i'll leave it alone i'll drop it, it it's there that, that's all that matters i, I just didn't know if there was it could also fit in a general section. Um, how, how do other people feel about this? We okay with leaving it as it is for now and just, uh, and again, we can always sleep on this and if Dan feels strongly, we can summarize that and put it up on page one as a more more uh, visible manifestation of what what we think is important. Um, does that sound okay, Dan? Good. Good with that. Okay. Um, do we need to take a little break here? A little stretch break. Uh, yes. Uh, it seems like energy is flagging a little bit. We have three more. Uh, sections to get through. I don't think they'll take quite as much time. Uh, it seems like we're done with historic preservation. Is that is that correct? People have other suggestions for this section or are we good to go? I'm good. Good? Good. Okay. Uh, so how about, uh, what? let me see, what time is it? I have down that it's, um, I don't know, what time is it? Uh, quarter it's of nine. Quarter of nine. How about uh, is is ten is ten ten minutes too much? Is five minutes good? Five, okay, back in five. All right, let's do it. Take a little break. I may not make it. My dogs are driving the bus right now. They got to go out. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right.
Hey, Sarah. Hello. Uh, on the minutes we approved, uh, I didn't have the little check mark by my name for being at that that meeting. I think maybe I showed up a little bit late. Is it is it possible to? Yes, I will get a, a present check mark. Yeah, I I usually <laughs> grab people when they come in, but sometimes I miss it if we're busy. I will thank you. I don't know if we need a a vote on that or that's just a easy fix. That's just a correction. All set. Thank you. So uh, it sounds like Chris had to go and and um Chris had to go and walk the dog, so we're not waiting for him. And here is Martha. So I think we'll get back. Uh, it's it is approaching nine o'clock. We generally don't go so long, but I do think we it it behooves us to power through these last three sections if we can hang in there. And I think if we really start to fade, we can always revisit this in next meeting. Because correct, uh, Sarah, I believe the next meeting is focused on. Uh, the public hearing for this plan, and then uh, any of the small grants of which there may be one. Oh, good. Did the dogs get walked, Chris? Nice. Excellent. That's important. Uh, so we're done with historic preservation. Uh, Sarah, next. Uh, any preference on which section to do next? Should I just open the next one? Sure. All right. Uh, housing. Housing is next. So, let's see. maybe we can start off with uh, general comments about the housing section. Uh, so this was mostly just updates to reflect plans that have been made since the last plan was adopted. Um, so included a section on the barriers to fair housing report, which some of you may remember was uh, initially sought to be completed with CPA funds, but it, it wasn't quite eligible. Um, some additional needs, reflecting some programs that have been funded, uh, some updates to the, the shelter resources. And that, that's really about it. I didn't, I didn't have a ton of edits here. Um, being accessible to people with disabilities, and being fossil fuel free were also added as criteria. Uh, our two uh, housing folks, main, uh, mainly Dan and Linda, do you want to comment on this? I think Jan is a planner as well. Specific issues that you think need to be addressed? I, I thought it was pretty good. I, I have just a couple of reorganizational suggestions and just one, um, I think, technical correction, but I, I thought it was a good section. Uh, it's such a difficult issue trying to. <laughs> uh, yeah, without referencing those other really extensive plans, it's hard to capture everything in yeah. such a small document. Yeah. Uh, Linda, are those um, suggestions that you have something something to do right now, or or those that you can just send to Sarah? Uh, if I could just describe them right now, that would actually be better for me. If you don't yeah. mind. Yes, um, let's do it. So the first one is in the first paragraph. And this is the technical correction. Um, your added language that talks about HUD grouping Northampton into the Springfield MSA. I think the issue is not that it creates a lower median income, which then creates the, the rental barriers. It's that it, cre it, it creates a lower fair market rent. Uh, how, uh, Linda, can you elaborate? How does it not 
create a lower median in income? Well, the, the issue is, um, as, it, as, as this go, section goes on, it says this creates a barrier for people trying to use housing vouchers as it often will not cover the rent. So um, the median income is your eligibility for the program. The fair market rent uh, determines how much assistance you're gonna be able to get and, and whether you're gonna be able, whether the unit is gonna be eligible um, for participation in the program. Okay. So the, it, the rents in Springfield are lower than the rents in Northampton, but if we're all grouped in together, then you get this, this for Northampton unrealistically low rent level. And somebody goes to try, I mean, this is an oversimplification, but somebody then tries to go, they've got a lower rent uh, that they, they have to achieve to be able to participate in the program. And it doesn't exist in Northampton because the rents are actually higher. So lumping all of these very different communities into one uh, MSA uh, really does not reflect the realities of the of very local housing markets. And it, it, it suppresses the rents that, uh, that, that, uh, that are allowable. And this, lang program. this language is appropriate as it's been rewritten by Sarah? Yep. Yep. That's good. Um, so moving on to my reordering. I thought that the, if you turn to the needs section on page three, um, the second line, second sentence starts talking about how CPA funds have been able to fill an important funding gap and talks about all the projects. Well, that's not really a need. I thought that could, better fit into the background section. Because you talked about having worked with a number of nonprofit development corporations and da 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 da. So you're giving a background about how CPA funds have been used in the past. Sure. And then the so needs that, section can truly can talk about the ongoing needs. Okay, so cut this whole paragraph, Linda, and move it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then I had one more reorganization suggestion when you're done with that. All right, all set. Um, which is under the shelters and rapid rehousing section. The first paragraph you um, talk about the interfaith cot shelter and so forth, and then move on to the VA. Um, but I think if you took the, the language from the following paragraph talking about service net, uh, you're again talking about ServiceNet and the Interfaith Cot Shelter. That that could be moved up so that you're talking about the Cot Shelter all in one paragraph, and then maybe a sec a separate paragraph talking about the VA. <clears throat> all set. That was it. What I saw. Dan, did you see stuff? I think it's it's well done. The, the only thing I, I see, you know, I, I appreciate the narrative about past projects. And I, I think the Community Preservation Coalition does a really nice job with their CPA projects database. And it seems to be updated at least through, through our April uh, approvals. 
you know, so I, I think just on these, or maybe on the on the website, you know, something that either has a direct link to the CPA projects database, or you know, some some additional way to see past projects and examples, you know, in a more comprehensive way. It's just a little bit hard to find uh, on their their website. And ours, is, I appreciate it. You know, has all the details, but they're out there in files. It's not really as as searchable, you know, by by year and category the way the CPA projects database. So maybe just a plug to consider that, you know, uh, you know, linking that database and and these, or or if we have the capability to put the the information on the city's website directly. I could add a link to it on the city website if that would work. Uh, directly good. to that. There's a link to the coalition in general, but I could add a specific link to that project database. That'd be great. And that, that would satisfy your concern, Dan? Definitely. I, I just found it really useful, you know, being being new to the committee. Once I found that database, you know, on the on the coalition page, it's it's really helpful to see, you know, year by year and, and category by category all the all the projects in our community and others. Uh, somewhat of an aside, um, people may have noticed a week or so ago, there was an editorial in the Gazette that was sort of questioning the CPA allocations for housing. Uh, and Sarah did a, a, a nice job of updating the website uh, to sort of reflect what the allocations are per category uh, and noting that um, uh, how much, what, what percent we spend on, uh, on affordable housing and, and how, how that's fit into our general funding uh, picture. So it was nice that she responded to, responded to that. One thing that I think you're going to try to do, Sarah, is in that little allocation table, uh, somehow include um, what this is generated in matching funds. And I think what, what what is it? I mean, it's a huge amount of of uh, yeah. So that that the, thank you, Sarah. So that lower table is what what you've just put in, uh, and you can see it's relatively even across the board between our four categories. Uh, what this really doesn't reflect is how much uh, our almost five million in affordable housing has generated in other funds. And what is it, Sarah? Eighty million. Or something has has come into the city, uh, and and which is much more than any of the other categories. So when we're if if in fact we're being criticized for not spending enough on affordable housing, well the five million we spent has helped to leverage an additional. What is it, Sarah? Isn't it eighty million or something? It was a lot. I don't have it at hand. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a crazy incredibly amount. Incredibly like thir amount. Thirteen to one. Or something for every dollar we spend, we we are uh, sort of able to leverage thirteen more dollars, which is really pretty spectacular. We don't see that in historic preservation uh, and uh, some in recreation open space. Uh, thanks for pulling that up. So, Sarah, back Sarah does this include the um, housing for the disabled, or is that not considered a funded project at this point? It, it so does include that. So, so this includes everything that was approved by city council. Uh, back to uh, affordable housing. Uh, other comments on this section? Just one, one question back on where you were before. Is that uh, investment since 2008 through autumn 2021? Is that, are, are those numbers I going believe away? so, yes. Right, sir. yes. Uh, so that's everything that's been funded in since the, the inception. Yeah. yeah. That would just be my only suggestion on that is just to make it clear that, you know, the, the year range that we're, that the, the, the numbers come from. And I just had one um, comment about the housing costs, Barton. I noticed uh, on page two. Um, uh, so, one... so back, I, I'm sorry, back, Dan, back to Dan's comments, Sarah, you could just put 2000. 
make a note that since its inception, this is what, what we funded through the yes. end of calendar year 2021. I think that's a good suggestion there. Okay, sorry, Martha. Page know. two. Um, yeah, I just, I, it, um, the housing cost burden, there were two um, data sources given for that. One was the 2000 census and one was the ACS from 2013-17. And there's a discrepancy. So I think probably the most recent one is, most up-to-date one is probably the right one to be using. Copied this from another plan. I don't know how to fix that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up. <laughs> look it up on the ICS. I don't know. Um, yeah, because that 2000 was 22 years ago. Um, and I would imagine that the housing cost burden has increased since then. But. So one, so we're, we're in that top paragraph, correct? Mm -hmm. One thing would be just to eliminate those last. Oh yeah, I'll just take that out. That's just take that yeah, sentence so, out. So this new language in red is the most up to yeah. Okay, great. So from there to the end of the paragraph out. Yeah, great. That's a good call, Martha. Uh, other suggestions for housing? One other thing I just wanted to mention is I think that the term elderly has kind of gone by the wayside and now it's um, older adults is the more acceptable term. That's what I'm in my world. That's what I've been told. Does it still say elderly anywhere? It does. And I think the uh, recreation one might as well. So just a caution. Okay. Yeah, they're down here. Okay. I'll just do a, I'll, I'll take all those references in. Martha, you just made my day. I'm no longer elderly. Fantastic. Yeah, right? Thing. I mean, really. I'm gonna, about time we got a little like, respect. I'm going to head on out to the bars after this meeting. There you go. And celebrate that. I have a question. Brian, was the Gazette piece that you're referencing the one that was um, also talked about some of the projects that have happened in, in Bay State um, as sort of representative of, okay, I, I would have seen it online either way, so I'm not sure, but um, it does, did the article reference Bay State? I'm just wondering if it was the same one. Yes, it did. So yeah. it, it was a it, sort of an, ex, an expanded editorial um, by a former housing partnership member. Okay. I guess I would just say uh, that a lot of conversations related to what's been happening in Bay State, we've noticed on the planning board that there's been a real confusion among members of the public of sort of the difference between sort of capital A affordable housing and attainable housing. Um, and so what I'm glad to see in the plan here, and I would say if any, if anything, if there's a way to kind of further emphasize that affordable housing capital A affordable housing is a very specific category that there are a lot of structures in place to address and f many fewer to address attainable housing. And I don't think, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, that CPA funding is the right place for that, um, for attainable housing. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to kind of further clarify that, but it's something that we've certainly seen and struggle with on the planning board to kind of describe that. Um, uh, the sustainable Northampton plans, the purpose of and, and kind of goals of general pieces of um, zoning ordinance and legislation intended to address affordable housing and attainable housing tend to be different, but the public seems to have a sort of blurring between the two. Um, so I think what I saw in that was a bit of the same thing happening. Um, so again, I'm not sure that there's a lot we can do about it here, except to sort of really emphasize very clearly what the definitions are that are guiding the kinds of projects that we can fund and that a lot of the issues are actually in attainable house. I mean, affordable housing, yes, but attainable housing as well. And that the CP, we as the CPC can do something about part of that problem, but not the other part. Um, 
Uh, is there a specific language you'd like to see included, Jana? I should have predicted you would have that question. Uh, <laughs> not off the top of my head, but I could try to think about it um, after the fact. And I don't know, Sarah, if you or Carolyn might have suggestions too. I'm sure you get related questions a lot. Um, yeah, I, I can look at that too and try and differentiate those. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be useful to differentiate between attainable and affordable if that's part of the confusion, Jenna, you're seeing is in, in, uh, in planning. Um, yeah. And that seems like something we could, we could, some language we could insert in there clarifying what that, what those differences are. Sarah, you can work on that. And Jenna, yep. if you have yep, definitely. thoughts. Yep. Uh, other housing suggestions? We good to go? All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, next. All right. So open space, I primarily updated um, to include the uh, vast progress that has been made since the CPA was adopted in Northampton. Um, Clarified some needs. Um, this is, I just, this, this is moving essentially. So this, this new bullet list is from the updated open space plan. Um, and, and that's so that's, verbatim. that's verbatim from the open space plan? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some new projects, uh, possibilities. And that's really about it. Not a not a ton of changes in this area. We're lacking our our um, both our rec person and our cons comp person tonight, uh, and um, perhaps if uh, if if Jen has additional stuff, she can make that known to you, Sarah, uh, and. Um, and that can be reflected in, a, in another draft. And same thing with uh, Julia for the, um, for, the, for the recreation component. Other suggestions for this open space? I have a couple. Um, uh, similar to the housing on page five, um, Sarah, you're talking about um, since 2007, the city has protected 2,500 acres of uh, blah, blah, blah. I think those are accomplishments that you're listing there. So the Pine Grove Golf Course is also, those aren't really needs. So again, I think those are, um, you know, need to go back up front under the background. Um, And I had a other, couple other small ones, but I can send those to you. Great, that's, a, that's good, good for clarity. Thank you, Martha. Uh, you sure you don't wanna share the other ones now, Martha? One of the things I thought was confusing is um, under needs in the first par first paragraph under needs, um, it says, um, it talks about how 25% of Northampton has been preserved um, in preservation efforts to continue. And I guess I, my question is here is, shouldn't this really be a question of how much undeveloped land that merits um, potential protection is open space is up, out there and, and maybe there isn't an inventory of that. I don't, I didn't look at the open space and recreation plan to see, um, but I, it just seems like that's a much better, um, you know, measure of need. Uh, so we removed the 
the goal for protecting 25% of the city mm -hmm. since that's been exceeded. So this is just noting what percentage of Northampton is protected. Right, but I guess that this is a, again a need. So, um, and again, maybe this is not something that is easily stated or even known, but how much, you know, what the potential is. I mean, I realize the need is you've met the need, so you're exceeding it, but is there, you know, what, what is the potential that's out there? That's the question. Uh, I mean, we don't have an assigned value to that. We don't have an assessment in that level of detail. Okay. So that, that's so, why it's a more broad, we yeah. should continue prioritize on ecological and climate resilience values. Okay. Um, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Satisfied with that, Martha? Okay. Other suggestions? Linda, good to go. Uh, Dan? Shannon? Uh, Chris? All right. Some advantages to having a meeting drag on after two hours is to become much more efficient or there are probably other words for it much 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 quicker but again we can revisit this once again at the uh two weeks from now uh so ready to move on to last but certainly not least recreation again julie is not here to guide us uh through that but we will um do folks have suggestions? Sarah, what, what did you mainly do here? This is probably, this is the one that had the least changes. So we added dog parks to project eligibility. That was, I don't know why that wasn't included before. Uh, just noting that more land area for recreation can be less expensive and more sustainable to manage if we let fields rest. Um, Pickleball made its mood. way in there, I saw. Yeah. What was that? Yes, it did. I, and I did add pickleball. Um, pickleball and water-based recreation as needs. And then uh, the project evaluation criteria are the same. Um, is the open space and recreation plan, uh, has, has that been done? Uh, so uh, it's uh, 2018 to 2025 is the current. So 20, okay. So, so a few more years and that will be redone Yes. as well. Okay. Any other uh, questions, comments, additions on this one? Quick question, the tot lots, are, are those just playgrounds? Uh, playgrounds for smaller kids. Okay. That was my first time hearing that. That phrase, tot lots. There you go. I I did remove senior citizen parks because I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Hello, what what was it called? <laughs> it, we um, so there was tot lots, and then there was also senior citizen parks, and I I don't know if that's a specific type of recreational definition, but I did add pickleball. At least, at least it didn't say parks for the elderly. Um, th but that does bring up a question though I have, and that is about the shifting demographics and the shift in needs related to that. And I, there wasn't really anything in here about this. You talk about addressing new recreation needs. Um, I just wonder if there was any, um, you know, uh, desire to address shifting demographics, I guess. And yeah, I think um, I was hoping Julia would be here to address that question specifically, but I can check with um, Julia and Anne-Marie about that. I'm sure they have yeah. some language that's ready to go. Okay. And the point is that shifting demographics, demographics uh, tend to support the need for recreation for, I was going to say seniors. No. What are we called again? Pickleball courts. <laughs> Pickle. What do we call elderly? What? Older adults, Brian. Older, that's right. Older no, distinguished a... adults. Speak for yourself, 
Um, so it's it's recognizing that as as the population ages, yeah, uh, or 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 becomes more youthful. If there's a projected large increase in you know the elementary school population, you know, that yeah. will affect what the recreation demands are. Great, Sarah, you can search for a line to put yeah. in. Yeah, I can research for that. Great, thank you, Martha. Other comments, suggestions? No, I'm just grateful that Sarah's doing this. <laughs> yes, hooray for Sarah. Yay, Sarah. Um, the, the last update was a minor update. This is, a, this is a much more substantial revision. Yeah, and it's something, again, we, if the need presents, we can revisit at any time for any reason. Uh, hopefully we don't. <laughs> But that's but that's 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 always an option. Uh, so two weeks from now we'll have a public hearing. In the past, has anyone showed up? To kind uh, of the work? last one, I don't think anyone came to. Okay, so we shall see. Sarah thought that perhaps uh, one or two folks might come in to weigh in on uh, historic preservation of private businesses. Uh, we shall see. But that will be how we will begin the meeting on. Um, on the, uh, what is it, the 16th? Uh, and we can move right from that to looking at some of the uh, additions that have come in the last two weeks. And Sarah can guide us through that. Uh, so we can hopefully, uh, if there in fact is, is public comment that, that, that needs to go in, uh, we will, Sarah will work on incorporating that. And then I guess in another couple or four weeks, we'll vote on the plan itself. Does that make sense? Great, all right, this was very useful. Thank you all for hanging in there for so long. We have um, one other agenda item uh, as we move on from the working session on the CPA plan. Uh, as happens every year, the Community Preservation Coalition is trying to uh, ask for its annual dues. For us, that's $4,350. Uh, for those, and I think Jana and I think Dan, you were here, Jana. I don't think you were, where we had a lot of debate at one point as to the worthiness of our forking over the money. Um, we actually had the, the the coalition executive director come to a meeting and speak to us as to the viability of the of the of the state organization. Uh, I think Sarah seems to feel that it's much more useful to uh, sm to smaller towns that do not have full-time staff and rely on the statewide CPC to guide them. It's also very useful for towns who are, have just voted themselves in uh, um, to, to be a CPA town and, and, uh, and don't quite understand what some of, the, some of the guidelines are. So for us, with, the, with Sarah running the show, we tend to use them uh, less or very little uh nonetheless there is a um is there a motion on the floor to appropriate four thousand three hundred fifty dollars for the annual fees for the community Pre preservation coalition i'll make that motion thank you linda is there a second i'll second thank you dan a discussion on this okay um, I prefer to see CPC, CPA money put into program rather than administration, other than the support of, um, our administrators. Um, I, I continue to question the efficacy of, um, uh, the work that this group does, and, um, I will abstain when we take the vote. Other um, discussion? I Linda? And I, I consider Northampton part of the Commonwealth and uh, given the utility to a lot of um, communities, I, I don't wanna stand out and, and not support it. Anybody else wish to comment on this? Can I ask a question? Please. 
Uh, I mean, Sarah mentioned or someone mentioned earlier about some other communities that have used Northampton's um, various of our guiding documents and other principles to sort of help theirs. Is that something that's a process that's aided along at all by our being involved in this group, sort of setting the tone for other communities in the state? I'm not really sure. I mean, they've reached out to us previously for project examples and model documents. Um, I think they do have some of those even available on their website. Um, but I think a lot of towns just sort of will, will Google and see what they come up with when they're putting things together and will borrow from those as, as needed, which isn't unusual. I know um, I, I went up and I think David uh, Drake went up too to Williamsburg when they were had voters uh, in a CPA so we could help them uh, navigate some of their newness. Uh, but whether that was just because it was a sister town so close to us, I, I, I don't know. But it's nice to know that people are looking to us for guidance. A little scary, but, but nice. Does that answer your question, Jim? Other discussion on our dues appropriation? Well, my memory was when, um, is it Stuart came to meet with us, um, that he was really uh, kind of positioning himself as the person who advocates uh, the legislature for you know this program and the matching funds. And, um, I, you know, I thought he made a very convincing case at the time, and I and I thought, okay, if he doesn't, he's not there to do this, and who's doing it? Is it our local, you know, reps or who? I don't, I don't know. Um, so I guess I'm sort of more in Linda's camp in the sense that I think that um, the program probably does need an advocate, and if that's his role, I think he's doing a good job, and we should, you know, we should support him. I say that I don't yeah. think there's a lot of people. Uh, one of the things he had mentioned was that part of the coalition's role is to protect the Community Preservation Act from attacks from interest groups and people who oppose the CPA in general. Um, and he gave some good examples of that previously. And they also advocate for additional distributions. So Northampton received $78,000 extra this year from the surplus budget that I, I don't think we would have received if the coalition didn't exist. That's pretty compelling. Yeah, I, mean, I think I, some of us were a little um, questioning why the budget is so big for the CP, for the coalition. I mean, it's in the that is half a million or six hundred thousand or something. We're we're wondering where all that money goes. Nonetheless, uh, they continue to to do good work throughout the Commonwealth for our for our behalf. We could argue. We could ask them for their income and expense statements and evaluate. Just kidding. We, we, we could. Why don't we form a, sub, a, a subcommittee? And Martha, you could chair that and evaluate their financial stuff. Yeah, they need to demonstrate financial need and tell us why they need CPA funding specifically. And they, they did used to provide an overview of their income and expenses. They, they didn't send that along this time. And I'm looking at their website and don't see it. Um, our, the amount that we are char our, our, our build is based on what, Sarah? The amount that we get, our community size, how, did, how is that determined? Uh, I think it's the amount of our local match, our, our local revenue. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on this? Are we ready to move ahead with the vote? Yes, ready to go? Okay, Sarah? Um, Jana? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chris? I'll abstain. Martha? Yes. Linda? Yes. And Brian? Yes. 
uh, moving right along. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? All right, I do believe that we are good to go. Again, we'll begin the next, uh, next meeting in two weeks with the uh, public commenting on specifically on the, on the plan. We'll move to any additions on the plan. And then we anticipate the one um, uh, smaller project to, to, to come up that, 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 we can, that we can move along at that time. Uh, thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Linda. Second. A second. A second. Thank you, Martha. And Sarah, do you really need our roll call on this? That's OK. OK, <laughs> yes, yes, it is wrong. Okay, thank you, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. All right, thanks so much again, Sarah.